White. Good crew on the whistle. Roger Ayers, Lee Cassell, and Jerry Heater in front of a big crowd in Raleigh at PNC Arena. As Manny Bates and Malik Osborne get us started. And Leonard Hamilton returning to his home state of North Carolina. We'll put it in the hands of Trent Forrest first. Florida State beat Pittsburgh Tuesday night by 15. Shot 50% from the floor in beating Jeff Capel's team. Forrest and Bryce the rebound. Wolfpack got a fast start the other night against Duke. Led that wire to wire. Paramount versus Florida State team. Coming out with that edge, that sense of urgency, ready to play for the jump, does a lot of good for this Wolfpack team. 15 to shoot for Devin Daniels. Now here's Johnson. Eight to shoot. He sizes up Walker off the screen of Bates. Markell spins out. And the rebound for Osborne. You see the Knowles line up. They did not elect to match the bigs of Thunderbird and Bates. Second chance slipped out of Bates' hands, and Raquan Gray handles it for Florida State on the reset. For Florida State, they don't have great, they do have great size, but not a great defensive rebounding team. Get after you on that offensive glass, though. Seven to shoot, and Osborne skips for Forrest. Rimmed out, Bassell gives the Knowles a third chance. Bassell back for Malik Osborne, standing three. And the rebound for Daniels. That's some bend but don't break defense right there, no question. No score, almost two minutes gone. Daniels fouled on the drive. The foul will be on Raekwon Gray, and great to be with Katie George today. Well, guys, Kevin Keats said the biggest mistake his team could make today is thinking that they can beat FSU by playing the same way that they played against Duke. He said they're two totally different teams. They were able to get inside against Duke on Wednesday. Today, that'll be more of a challenge. So the Wolfpack will need to score in a variety of ways, particularly on the perimeter. Now, it may take a different game plan to pull off another upset here, but players say they'll need the same level of toughness and composure to do so, Wes. It's going to be interesting, especially because when you beat Duke by 22 as Daniels hits both, you're the toast of the town for like two days, Jordan. Everybody's telling you how great you are, how you belong in a tournament. You can't rest on your laurels because Florida State is just as good as Duke. But like Katie said, very different personnel. Walker on Thunderbird. Vassell a three. That's a good sign for Florida State. Devin Vassell just one of five last Tuesday, and a backcourt foul on MJ Walker. So Devin Vassell, who enters the game, 14th in conference play in scoring. And Jordan, I got to be honest with you, I think he's first team All ACC. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, there's been so many scouts I've talked to at the next level, had long conversations, and they are so excited about what he brings. Right now, it's about the college game in this regular season. Forrest on the takeaway and layup. Trent Forrest, the grad guard from Chipley, Florida, and very quickly five in a row for the Knowles. C.J. Bryce kind of got lost in the headlines Wednesday night. There's Thunderbird, who had 21 in the win against the Blue Devils. Getting NC State their first field goal. You don't love this shot. That's probably the extent of his range to about there. But you give him that space with the confidence he's playing with right now. Watch out. He's saying he might have been amped up on that three the other night. Yeah. <laughs> the cell, 10 to shoot. Here's Forrest again. Got baseline. Skips for Walker. Open three on the wing. And Thunderbird the rebound. Great discipline on the drive, make a meet a chest, swing pass, late contest, and the one and done scenario. Three and a half gone, the runner by Bryce missed everything. Forrest challenges Bates, offensive foul on Trent Forrest. One on Forrest, three on Florida State early. In. The Knowles give it right back to the Wolfpack. 
Oh, they called it on Osborne, not Forrest. So it'll be the first on the Rice transfer from Madison, Illinois, Malik Osborne. Rice trying to find a seam here. Wolfpack, first time seeing the Seminoles, finding out very quickly they change, switch on everything. Windows of opportunity, very slim to pursue gaps. Bryce, deep ball away from the front. Osborne snatched it out. Raekwon Gray, all the way to the rack. 6'8", 260, coming at you in fifth gear. Very workmanlike start for Florida State, Jordan. Bryce against Bassell. Here's Markel Johnson against Gray. Foul line jumper, good for Johnson. Astute decision making, decisive effort for Markel Johnson, identifying the mismatch versus Gray, making the read, beating him off the dribble and conversion. Here's Gray, lost it on the dribble, tried to keep it alive, Forrest does. And he scoops it up and in. Four for Trent Forrest. You talk about a steady performer. Hey, not just on the floor. Yesterday, he was named one of almost 50 ACC postgraduate scholarship winners. That's the kind of leadership you want for a team that has so many pieces. You gotta have a guy to get them all in line. Forrest as good as any. They're gonna timeout. Foul is on the Knowles. NC State falling behind early thanks to a couple of field goals from Trent Forrest. Career high 28. Devin Daniels, a career high 25, and DJ Funderburg, one short of his career high as well. Yeah, they were absolutely lights out, the Wolfpack. Playing with great confidence and led by really three guys. Upperclassmen getting it done. They have changed the foul a moment ago that was assessed to Osborne and awarded it to Trent Forrest. So it's still four fouls for Florida State, but it's the first on Forrest. And for the first time today, Leonard Hamilton's gotten to the bench. Dominic Olinichuk. Wearing number 15 for the Knowles on the floor. Here's Markel Johnson. Had a three block by Raekwon Evans. Daniels gathers and scores Devin on the stick back for the Wolfpack. Four for Devin Daniels. So Evans out of Billings, Montana. Off the bench along with the Lena Chuck. And also here's Patrick Williams, the 6'8 freshman from Charlotte who almost turned it over. Jericho Helms batted it away. Last touch by Florida State says Roger Ayer. Second turnover for Leonard Hamilton's team. And now all of a sudden, six minutes in, here's kind of NC State getting their sea legs in this game. And that's what was to be expected, Wes, with a Florida State team they haven't seen this year, really feeling out where the opportunities are going to come from. Johnson feeds Helms, and another foul called underneath the basket by Lee Cassell. And the foul will be on MJ Walker. And that is his second and five on Leonard Hamilton's team. What a marvelous job the 71-year-old native of Gastonia, North Carolina has done. And Jordan, I equate it to people saying he had good teams. He now has a good program. And it took a while for him to build up, not in terms of success. That came pretty, pretty early with Coach Hamilton. But the belief that this system could work, not getting five All-Americans, but building a roster one through 11, really, of very talented players. Daniels on the drive and fouled by Evans. That'll be his first, and that is six on Florida State. So the Knowles are racking up some team fouls here, and NC State, a 70.7 free throw shooting team as the Battle Creek, Michigan native Daniels knocks the first one down. Don't forget Tuesday night, more basketball here on ACC Network. Over to Winston-Salem will go for Wake Forest and Duke in their second meeting of the year at 7 o'clock. 
as the Blue Devils try and stay in that mix with Louisville and with Florida State for the regular season crowd. And the seventh foul on Florida State comes on the free throw missed by Daniels. And a couple of free throws coming for Jericho Hellams on Patrick Williams' first foul. And there is number seven with 13.24 to go in the first half. NC State yet to be whistled for one as Hellams from St. Louis to the line. Jericho Hellams, 16 points. For five points the other night, 10 of 24 and three of his last nine from three coming in as he knocked the first free throw down. Hellams is a big part of the operation in terms of generating balance for this Wolfpack team. 41% of his shots come from the three-point line. Sometimes you like to see Hellams be a little bit more aggressive in his pursuit for shots inside the arc. Right. One-point lead for the Wolfpack after that flurry. And Anthony Polite tried to get all the way through against Johnson. Got bottled up and kicks for Forrest. Olenichuk trying to post up Bates. Polite had it bothered by Markel Johnson. In the corner, Williams, the freshman, missed everything on the three. Wolfpack's got the momentum, Jordan. Yeah, and they're looking to run and explore some early stuff, too. That edge, which if you were curious if they're going to play with it, that's been clear. Johnson trying to take Olenichuk. Skips for Hellams. Big three. It's all Markel Johnson. Drive and kick. Available shooters. Can they make those shots this afternoon? Hellams delivers. A 7-0 run, and the Wolfpack got some life. Four-point lead for Kevin Keats' team. You wondered how the first few minutes would be post-Wednesday night and the victory against Duke. Olenichuk, right-hand jump hook over the top of Bates. Dominic Olenichuk, great transfer from Poland on the board. Bates is a rim protector, no question, but you want to challenge him. That's a grad center at seven foot tall going against a 6'11 freshman. You want to try and expose Bates, get him in some foul trouble potential. Bar switches and here's Daniels. Trying to drive on Olenichuk, runner right hand, bounces in for Devin Daniels. Second field goal for Daniels, he's got seven. Coming off 25 on Wednesday night. Such a good slasher, a guy with so many shooters on his team, or guys that want to take him. He loves to drive that thing, put pressure on a defense. Olenichuk, and a foul will be called. And that'll get us to a timeout, but boy, you're right. Markel Johnson and Devin Daniels have brought the Wolfpack back. Doing what he does. Hellum's the beneficiary there, but the drive to get the defense to commit. Then Daniels carving up. Go in this first half with Jordan Cornette, Wes Durham, Alex Farmatino, our producer, Michael Sullivan, our director. And the Wolfpack, we keep talking about the win over, win over Duke on Wednesday night, but there you had to sort out what NC State was going to be post-Duke here in the first few minutes, Jordan. Yeah, and it started with their perimeter. Then it started with Markel Johnson. I mean, ultimately, his level of play is who the Wolfpack are going to be in any game. And right now, he's playing with an edge. He's starting to be aggressive, getting into the paint, making the defense respect him, and that edge becomes contagious. Florida State out of the timeout. Here's Williams with seven to shoot. Now Forrest with the shot clock winding down. Polite shot clock violation. I don't think the Knowles had an idea that the clock was running out on the possession as Devin Bissell comes back in for Leonard Hamilton's team. Third turnover for Florida State. And yeah, it's a Florida State team that could fall into bouts of being careless with the basketball and having careless moments like that. The Wolfpack must take advantage of that on their home floor because Florida State is a well-coached team. They're not going to make too many mistakes like that. So it's a four-point game. And Braxton Beverly is on the floor, the junior from Hazard, Kentucky. But he has struggled offensively as of late, averaging just two points over the last three games. He's only hit two of his last 15 from the floor. 11 to shoot for Beverly. And Johnson over there getting... 
A break on the Wolfpack bench, and here's Daniels slashing from the wing and blocked from behind out of bounds by Bissell with two to go on the possession. And we talk about how the Wolfpack are feeling out this Florida State defense. Perfect example. You feel like you've got the defender beat on your hip. Daniels with confidence gets to the rim. Help side slides in. Vassell recovers and blocks the shot. Quick pass. Daniels the layup. And it'll be basket interference on DJ Funderburg. And not even necessary. The ball was going down. Daniels frustrated with Funderburg. You love your big fella being aggressive. But you got to think, I think this one was already going in. What do you think? Getting ready to say, I'm going to use the benefit of the yeah, replay. Yeah, yeah. I think I it's a goal know. 10, no question. Yep. The ball is definitely, definitely in the cylinder. Definitely a goal 10. We'll pack by four. Olena Chuck to catch in traffic. Polite the lefty three. Michael Polite, or Anthony Polite, the son of the former Seminole Michael Polite, knocks the three down and knows to within a point. I don't love a seven footer right underneath the basket kicking it out, but when it's changing out a two for a three, it's a great play. Markel Johnson back to the table. There's Helms a scoop and a foul on Florida State. That's going to be eight fouls on the Knowles. And I believe the second on Trent Forrest. So no question, it's a goaltend here. It's just a matter of if it was needed. Oh, that ball was going down. Butterberg had no need over eager, and it cost him. That layup was on its way down from Daniels. A little big man counseling by you there? Is that what that is? Well, that's the thing. You know, Funderburg's going to get a locker room post game back. My bad, dog. I thought I was helping us out. Where Daniels is saying, man, I, that's two points taken away from me. But you're counseling DJ on that. Yeah, I'm telling him how he needs to approach it after the game. <laughs> he's got some. Because he's already, he's already made the mistake, right? <laughs> Helms hits both the free throws. He has six. And NC State has built a three-point lead on number eight, Florida State. Here's Raekwon Evans with Patrick Williams, Elena Chuck, Bissell, and Polite. Another catch by the big man. Back over the left shoulder, and he'll draw the Thunderbird foul. Now, Florida State has made it a focus of theirs in a half-court setting to go down low, play through these bigs. That's vintage Florida State. Coach Hamilton loves featuring his bigs. He wants to test Funderburg, get him in some foul trouble, and really open up the interior. Just the 15th free throw attempt of the year for Elena Chuck, and it's good. Gives him three points. Don't forget, Monday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on ACC Network, another edition of All Access with Carolina Basketball. Behind the scenes, look at the return of Cole Anthony and the epic showdown with Duke. Also, an in-depth look at the story of Charles Scott as we celebrate Black History Month, 8 o'clock Monday night here on ACC Network. During the break here in Raleigh, in fact, speaking of the first African-American scholarship basketball player at Carolina, Charles Scott, Al Hartley, honored here by the PNC Arena crowd, the first African-American basketball player on scholarship at NC State. Crowd respected their oh. history, got up on their feet and went crazy. I love it. Yep. Cool moment. One point lead for NC State. Johnson back on the floor for Coach Keats. There's 6 7. Vassell is the defender. Beverly catch and shoot. Knocks it down. 43 of the year for Braxton Beverly, who was just one of his last nine from behind the line. And an offensive foul on Evans as Jericho Hellum stepped in front. Now, Markel Johnson averages six and a half assists per game. He's going to find his guys. It's just come down to, are they going to be there? And here's Helms. As much as he was in posi position, Evans with that arm bar is ultimately what earned the whistle. Jordan, I think here in the last three to four weeks, I have seen more offensive fouls called because the leading arm of the, of the offensive player. And the defense has to do their part to sell it. And, and you got a little bit of that with Helms because he was in proper position defensively, too. Catch and shoot, Price from the right. And the rebound for Polite. Picks up on the dribble against Helms, and now Vassell. Copa Pizza has come in the ball game, wearing number five for Florida State to replace Alenichuk a moment ago. Balsha Copa Pizza from Serbia. Here's Gray spinning. 
a whistle foul called by Lee Cassell on the baseline. Now, great. That was really smart decision for him. Gets in the post. He feels the double coming one way, spins away from it to stay with the advantage with the smaller Johnson. He sees Funderburg, spins away from Funderburg to get to that rim and draw the foul, going away from the defense. Big time play. 6'8", 260 on the wheel, by the way. I love the big fellas that can move. I had him on when I was filling in for you on Packer and Durham. I said, so how do you do it with two Ra Raekwons on a roster? Who goes by who? He goes, come on, man, I'm Turk. You're the only person that doesn't call me Turk. <laughs> Grandmama gave me that nickname. I said, my fault. So it's Turk from here on out. All right. So Turk Gray. Turk Gray. Has three points. Turk. Very, very fun interview. Had eight minutes to go. I'll tell you what, he's done a marvelous job. Kind of in the supplemental role with Forrest and Vassell and Williams and Osborne have given him. There's a three by Beverly spinning away. And Helms the rebound. Second chance opportunity again. And Jericho traveled with it before the shot. It's the right call. Fumbled that thing, trying to gather it to go. Right call. Three-point lead for the Wolfpack. Under eight break and run. Running the quad one, the most out of any team in the ACC in terms of quad one wins with five. That should be something worth boasting about. However, think back to last year. You play Clemson, the Wolf, this Wolfpack team. You beat them in the first round of the ACC. You thought that was good enough to get in the dance. It wasn't. So you want to be a team that controls your own destiny. It starts with seizing the opportunity this afternoon and not worrying about what Lenardi has to say, just simply being in this thing. Wyatt Wilkes has checked into the ball game for the first time. He wears 31 for the Florida State Ball Club. Five on the shot clock. Gray got caught in a double team. A little fall away is short. Thunderbird, the rebound. Daniels, kick back for Markel Johnson. Here's Thunderbird against Koperbica. The ball got slapped away, and it will stay with the Wolfpack. Katie, who was with Leonard Hamilton's group a moment ago. Well, Coach Charlton Young was very candid in that last huddle. He said, look, we're giving them too much respect right now. They only have two turnovers. We have to be more active with our hands. We have to poke at it, get them out of rhythm. So it'll be interesting to see if they talk about it. Now. They put together here in Tallahassee. Let's go back to Katie on the timeout a moment ago with Charlton. Well, as you said about Young, very, very great developer. He said, we're backing up right now. We're watching them and letting them have their way in the paint right there. He said, we have to clog the lanes, be more efficient with deflections, forcing turnovers and steals. Well, Thunderbird on cue scores. It's a five-point game, the largest of the night in yeah. terms of a lead. This is not traditionally what you see from Florida State's defense. So that is a credit to the Wolfpack and their offensive edge. But no doubt, you got to see more ball pressure from these Seminoles, make it a little bit more uncomfortable for this perimeter of the Wolfpack that's having the time right now. Here's Wyatt Wilkes on the catch and shoot, and that's what he does. 72% of his shots against the conference are threes. He had 19 against Notre Dame, and he knocks down the triple there. Hellams beating Thunderbird, and a foul called. And I believe it is on Wyatt Wilkes. You talk about depth from Florida State. Here's a prime example. Polite with the drive, gets his feet into the paint. That defense collapses, and Wilkes left wide open. Coach Hamilton, very high on this young man and talking with him. Please, by the time he's done, he could be one of the all-time great shooters in Seminoles history. That kind of prince. Tenth best free throw shooter in the ACC, DJ Funderburg, now has five here in the half. Wilkes, by the way, Young man from Orlando is a basketball legacy, and there's no other way around it. His grandfather, Dr. Glenn Wilkes, was the longtime head basketball coach at Stetson. As Thunderbird has the second rattle out, and his dad and mom, both basketball players in their own right, and his dad a fine coach at Rollins College in Florida. That ball thrown away on the turnover. Here is Helms, open floor for the dunk. And I. Gray must have thought he had a teammate standing next to him because that was a pass headed his way that he didn't step into. Back to a five-point edge. The sell for Wilkes again. Long rebound for Hellens. And here's Markell. Watch Johnson trying to get a paint. He's been starting off most half-court sets by getting in there and then moving it. There it is. Yep for Daniels. The cell pulls it away. And then Daniels took it away on the exchange. Rice right back from Johnson. 
Oh, my goodness. First points for C.J. Bryce. When it's going your way, it's going your way, Wes. <laughs> Under five to go. And last touch by Florida State. I mean, just here's the Seminoles. Unforced error. Gray didn't know what to do with it. Helm said, okay, thank you very much. And then another live ball turnover, this time in their own backcourt. Daniels over to Bryce. Bryce must have thought that was Funderburg. Johnson goes, uh-uh. Gives it right back to him. Hot cakes for the layup. Bryce for Daniels. Thunderbird, seven to shoot. Had it taken away by Gray. Doing too much, Wes. Now Patrick Williams and Daniels poked it out of there. Johnson, four Daniels on the run, and he almost volleyballed it in. Daniels has been mighty active, though. Disruptive defensively. Turning Florida State over by himself. Polite long with the three. And the stick back won't go. Wow. Williams tap does. That's incredible. That is a leaping ability, unlike any other in this building. Patrick Williams, first points, cuts it back to a five point game. I mean, I don't know what the leaping ability is of the fans out here, but I don't think anybody's jumping like Patrick Williams. Pretty solid. Wow. So now, Florida State's had a turnover issue here in the last few minutes, and now Bassell picks Johnson. He'll try and beat Helms to the rack, and one. Second field goal for Devin Bassell, and Jericho Helms makes it worse with the foul in transition. You know, we, we call this, Wes. Breakdown here, Johnson looking, looking. Cookies! <laughs> Devin Vassell the other way with the layup. On the kind of game it's going to be. They're the aggressor. Right. right now, that hasn't been the case. The Wolfpack have been the team that's been charging and put Florida State on their heels. Turnovers for Florida State's been a little bit of an issue. Now, NC State hasn't capitalized necessarily, right. but it's taken Florida State out of their offensive rhythm because they haven't been able to establish one because of the carelessness with the pill. It's interesting, too, because NC State, they've gone from playing on the momentum of Wednesday night now to playing with momentum today. Really impressive. That was the question coming in. Would the Wolfpack have enough, especially with the depth of a Florida State team? Now, look, we're only 17 minutes into this game. As deep as Florida State goes, can the Wolfpack maintain? That'll become the theme as we get deep into the second half. Eight to shoot for Bryce. Who's been relatively quiet so far. Bates lost a handle on it to Bissell. Five turnovers for the Wolfpack. Evans back on the floor. He plays with two. Remember, Forrest went to the bench with under 10 minutes to go with two fouls for Coach Hamilton. Out for Evans. Standing three is short. And Williams the rebound from behind Manny Bates. Boy, there's a lot to like about the freshman Patrick Williams. And for a McDonald's All-American coming in, lacks the ego. Just makes a place. There's one. He's got four in the game on the second field goal. Coachable young man. Very humble guy. Just another piece in the Coach Hamilton puzzle of guys you can throw out there that shine. 7-0 run by the Knowles. Ties the game at 27. Thunderbird against Wilkes. That's big time. Bullies him in and then missed the layup, got it back. And loose ball. Wilkes chased it, but it will stay with the Wolfpack. And Wyatt Wilkes got banged around. Then they had the presence of mind to try and get got, back to his feet and make a play. He got whacked in the face, but Thunderbird took some licks on the shot here. I thought there's some decent contact. Williams coming from help side. Let him play through. Hey, I ain't mad. I, I like it when they let the big guys bang around down low. Under two to go. Daniels. <laughs> Funderburg again. Oh, lay it back in. Seven for DJ Funderburg. That's what we were talking about coming from break. That's bully ball. That's NC State being the aggressor for State on their hands. Williams missed the two. Daniels the rebound. 
And the Wolfpack trying to rip and run. Bryce against Evans. Daniels never settles for that three. Always looks to get something back. Here's Bryce, he'll fire. And hit. 23rd three of the year for Charlotte C.J. Bryce. He's got five, and the lead back to five. Coach Keith said we just need to get healthy. Maybe this is who the Wolfpack are when healthy. We'll see. Vassell, final minute, Williams spinning on Beverly, blocked by Bates. Here's Bryce launching again. And Evans the rebound and a foul on Thunderbird will be his second with 45 seconds to play here in the half. We talked about the catalyst, the aggressor, setting the tone. Daniels playing downhill, Bates tipping at it, Thunderbird gathers and delivers at the rim. And then here, Patrick Williams ain't used to denial, but when Manny Bates, the rim protector, is the last line of defense, one of the best shot blockers in the country, you'll have one. Second on Thunderbird, a little backcourt pressure offered by the Wolfpack as we wind through this final minute. Osborne draws iron on a three. And now State can hold for one here. And a timeout will be taken by Kevin Keats. Use it or lose it, 30 for the third year coach of the Wolfpack. Don't forget every Sunday night, our weekly basketball studios show nothing but net. A look at the matchups ahead in the ACC and a look back at the best games with highlights, analysis, and insight that only we can provide you. This week's show follows Miami Notre Dame tomorrow night, eight o'clock Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and always streaming on the ESPN app. Well, already today, Virginia has beaten Pittsburgh 59-56. Two other ball games at this hour, in addition to NC State trying to, as Kevin Keese told you, get another quad one, Jordan. Well, <laughs> that quad one conversation. Look, speaking of conversation, what they're going to be talking about on nothing but net tomorrow, without question, is how many tournament teams? How many tournament teams are coming out of the ACC? Virginia holding serve, keeps them in. What we've seen in this first half goes a long way for the Wolfpack, but let's talk about the game and what's going on right now. Points in the paint, FSU had early success there. There's been some settling beyond the arc from the Seminoles. Three of 12 there. They need to get back to pursuing those twos. Meanwhile, the Wolfpack can just keep doing what they're doing, being an attack mode. Here's Beverly and NC State to hold for one in the final 10. Zone Walker going back to man principles here. Beverly for Daniels, four, three. Devin will spin and fall away, missed everything, and the half will come to a close. So the Wolfpack, after watching Florida State build some early momentum, NC State going to take a five-point run. Half. Only took one shot, Jordan, for a guy who comes in averaging 10 and a half against the league. It goes back to what Coach Hamilton saying, being tentative. It starts with your lead players, your lead guys stepping up. So the number eight team in the country trailing five at the break. And here's Markel Johnson spotting up. The front rim miss that Walker gathers. Take away some of that one-on-one -on -one ball, that penetration. Florida State shifts into a 2-3 zone look a little bit. Here's MJ Walker looking for his first basket and gets it on the runner. You would think in order for Florida State to win today, Walker's going to have to be a factor here in the second half. He's going to have to be more aggressive hunting a shot, no question. Hey, the zone here employed by the Noles. Yeah, and this is all because of the inability to keep those aggressive guards on the Wolfpack perimeter from attacking the drive. Then it gone here in the half, deflection by Walker, Gray, out front, here's Forrest, he's got Osborne with him, and the set down dunk. This zone has been a huge adjustment. Now you extend out a little bit more, shorten the shot clock, and now you've got a Wolfpack team that was so aggressive. Now it's their turn to be a little bit more tentative and have to read rather than you simply react. 
Two guys who didn't scratch in the first half have scored the first two points, or two baskets rather, for Florida State here in half two, but Knowles to within one quickly. Johnson against Raquan Gray at the front. Now Markell, a three from the left is in. After hitting five of five the other night against Duke, Johnson on the board from behind the line for the first time, and he has five. Gray driving it at Thunderbird. Walker had it stripped away by Johnson, recovers it, gets into traffic, and scores! MJ Walker is at the table for half two. Exactly how you drew it up right there, Wes. Just the way you wanted it. But it goes back to being aggressive driving the thing. Speaking of how you drew it up right here, it's pretty nice. Forrest goes upstairs. Finish from Osborne up, up and away. And here's where MJ Walker is really made a statement here in the second half. Attacking at the rim. 81% free throw shooter, has five of Florida State seven. And the Knowles to within one at 35-34. Flurry here to start the second half for Leonard Hamilton's team. Bryce a catch and shoot from the corner. And Daniels and Bates both had chances to collect it. And it will go to Florida State. And here is Jericho Helms with the T-shirt on. Jericho might want to get rid of that T-shirt. Ha ha! Been there. Play with one under the jersey, but not on the jersey. It's a lot of layers. It is kind of uncharacteristically cold oh, down in these just, parts. You know, you and Katie talking about the ice in the <laughs> arena here. In the home of the Carolina Hurricanes. You guys you guys came in the door today talking about how cold it is. Hey, layers are important. Me and Katie are figuring that out very quickly. <laughs> Get you guys down here in the middle of Raleigh and you tell me how cold it is. Got a little snow on the ground here for heaven's sake. The drive forest. Turned over to Johnson. He'll just heave it out front. Bryce the catch. And missed the layup. CJ took a big fall underneath the basket. Knowles the other way. Walker the pull up. They scramble at the iron and Forrest has it. Wolfpack have battled that for the better part of the game, giving up second chance opportunities. Seminoles look to capital. Get a whistle and a foul, and it will be against Daniels, his first. Now, C.J. Bryce, remember, takes a bit of a spill here, Jordan. And remember, a month or so ago, was a, yeah, missed a couple of ball games with concussion symptoms. That's why I watch closely. Hope there's no bang in the head. Katie, what'd you see? Well, he took a bad fall, and then he stayed on the ground for a couple of minutes. And then when Florida State didn't hit the basket, he started running back down there to get on defense. There is a foul. Roger Ayers and Lee Cassell. They're going to ticket DJ Thunderbird, and that's four. The third of the half against the Wolfpack is number four on the junior from Cleveland. And now NC State, their best offensive big, is in real foul trouble. And that should change, or at least continue, the path that Florida State's been exploring and being attacked for. Continue to put that pressure on him, and that's absolutely a foul. That left arm from Thunderbird got muddied up in there. A lot of contact. Let's keep in mind that it was a little bit lopsided, the whistle there in the first half. Florida State not being the beneficiary of much. Now they're looking to attack and get that whistle. Walker hits them both, and the Knowles are in front for the first time since it was 9 to 8. 36 35. the zone, Jordan. This big, because now you see the Wolfpack have to settle for a lot from the outside. You've got to get a Helms in that, that space right by the logo at the paint, collapse that defense, or dribble penetration is still an option. Three to shoot, Johnson going to heave it from way out front, miss everything, Helms collected, and missed the stick back. It's not a man defense, but yet still you got to approach it with the same person. Gray, too strong in the drive. Bryce, the lead, Daniels can't catch up to it. And NC State gives it right back at 94 feet. It's a poor decision. Take your time, take Margin your time. for error is simply too slim. Bryce, see what you wanted there. 
but you got you still got numbers. You can push that thing yourself in transition and still have an advantage. But Florida State, with four minutes gone practically in the second half, has come from a five-point halftime deficit to take the lead. Outscoring NC State 9-3 here at the front of the frame. Morris trying to find that space between Bates and Johnson and Trent Forrest got his third period. How about the patience from Forrest there? Those dribbles, 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 waiting to see. Thought he was gonna try and force a bounce pass to Osborne. Thinks differently, throws a little floater. We'll pack quickly to the foul line here. Here's Mellums. Little up and under. Just the second field goal against the zone for Kevin Keats's team. Yeah, Mellums has had himself a day active on the backboard. Viable scoring option, keeping his wolf back in it. Walker, a deep three from the right is good. MJ Walker has not a 10 all in the second half. Well, you asked for him to be more assertive. Worked his way from the inside. Got comfortable there with a few baskets on out. Largest lead of the ball game for Florida State. And the number eight Seminoles have come on in a flurry here in the second half. A lot of it on MJ Walker. Yeah, MJ Walker more assertive. Coach Hamilton and talking to Katie coming out for the half said he's tired of watching these guys dribble, 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 be tentative, pass it to the next guy. Be in attack mode. Well, you lean on your best players. MJ Walker delivering that to begin the second stance. Remember now, the game was tied at 35 when Thunderbird left with 16.53 to go on his fourth foul. Daniels a three. Devin Daniels. It's now two. Thank you, Park. On the line in the corner. Devin Daniels with nine on his third field goal. But, Wes, that's how you attack that zone. Johnson dribbles, get in, gets into the paint. Defense is shifting. Kicks it over. Daniels then drives it. And then you get the clean look from the outside. Greg Forrest. Now here's the cell. Ball away. Left it short. Osborne inside trying to clean it up. Went to the deck. And a hell ball will belong to the Lee Cassell, the whistle. Turnover number nine on Leonard Hamilton's team. And stop here for a moment as Jerry Heater is at the scorer's table. The umpire working today with Roger Ayers and Lee Cassell to get the shot clock cycled back to 30. And here's some backcourt pressure off. Yeah, nothing too heavy. Mainly just to shorten the clock, make them work to get it up. And then you get right back into that zone. Trying to figure this thing out now. Takes even more off the clock, and you're really, really settling. So I like what Coach Hamilton's doing here defensively. Trent Forrest drives the defensive instructions for Leonard Hamilton and, and, off the front. Mellons, who's having a pretty good ball game now to double figures. He's got 12 on his fourth field goal. Wolfpack slowly starting to figure it out. Even though it's not man, we can still attack this thing. Really try and get two feet in the paint. There are gaps within the 2-3 zone. Take steam out of their offensive execution, too, that they had in the first half. Yeah, it took them out of the rhythm, most importantly, Wes. And that was huge because they had found some rhythm, which equated to some momentum. Williams on the baseline, fouled by Bates. Second on the freshman, Bates. Fourth on the Wolfpack, Katie. Well, Kevin Keats in that last timeout, he breaks things down each half into five four-minute segments or battles, as he likes to call them. NC State lost the first battle of this half, 14 to five. Keats said, it's okay as long as we get consecutive stops and get back to being the aggressor. He said, we're playing like we're back on our heels right now. I want to see you guys in attack mode, much like we saw from State in the first half, Wes. You see the Lynchburg, Virginia native at the front of the bench as Patrick Williams hits both free throws. Florida State yet to be whistled for a foul here in the second half. Four on Keats' Wolfpack. I've often told him I think he ought to put a pedometer in his pocket during the game. I'd just like to know the miles. <laughs> he doesn't sit much. Bryce Daniels launching. And kept alive and recovered by Osborne. Well, Malik Osborne is not your traditional five, and there's the sale in one. Great body control playing through the contact. How about the look for Williams? Decisive with the look in stride. Seamless right there. That's a great delivery. Stepping into it with momentum at 6'7". The length, the body control, the athleticism to the forefront. By the way, that is three on the redshirt freshman, Manny Bates. 
Thunderbirds on the bench with four, now Bates with three. And Bissell, who's hit his only free throw of the day, can't find that one on the three-point try. Really hurt the Wolf Pack to not play heavy minutes with Thunderbird, who saddled with those fouls. Given his performance on Wednesday night against Duke. Here's Bryce. This is long on the three. It's advantage Florida State. It's exactly what they're looking for. Forced out of rhythm three. Steve's Williams challenging both Bryce and Bates. And Osborne the rebound. And traffic Forest tend to shoot. He likes this matchup. Bates on the outside. Trying to split the front. Helms will commit the foul. Second on Jericho Helms. It'll be number six on the Wolfpack. Four-point lead for Florida State. Don't forget Tuesday night right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Duke travels to Winston-Salem. Second meeting of the year against Danny Manning and the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest as the Blue Devils try and capture their first regular season ACC title since 2010. Duke ran off in the first meeting in 190-59. Williams went for the hammer. Bates bothered it, and Osborne scores on the recovery. Florida State's got its largest lead. Bates doesn't let you get anything easy at the rim. Patrick Williams has found that out a difficult way twice, but because he's aggressive, it allows help side to get the easy rebound and finish. Here's a cross for Daniels. Eight minutes gone in the second half. Beverly, shot faking a two. He's good for Braxton Beverly. He's got five. A three and a regular field goal. A little bit more patient there on that possession. Well, it's not really who Florida State is with the zone. So in these opportunities, there's going to be breakdowns defensively to exploit. There's Osborne. Coming out, challenging Bates. And scores. Tough shot. Malik Osborne's got six all in the second half. That is a tough shot. Markel Johnson and the Wolfpack find themselves down six. It's a point of game where Johnson's got to start to take some control of his team. Here's Beverly, a three from the front. Got it in one. So Braxton Beverly, who was just one of his last nine from behind the line, has knocked down two triples and a regular field goal, and he'll go to the line for the rare four-point play when we come back. PNC Arena, young man from Hazard, Kentucky, is headed to the stripe for the rare four-point play. And, and watch out. This guy's a sharpshooter. He's been struggling. We talked to Coach Keats today, and he really believed this could be the breakout game. Guy's been battling injuries all season long, but yet still, first one in the gym, last one to leave, wants it as much as anybody. They could look to him to bust this zone and force Florida State to play more man. Forrest, lob catch Williams up strong and fouled, and that's Danny Dixon, the grad transfer from Missouri, Kansas City, who commits the foul. That is 17 fouls on the Wolfpack, Katie. Well, in that last huddle, Leonard Hamilton urged his players to keep driving and attacking the paint. And he said, don't let them off the hook, you guys. Their bigs are in so much foul trouble. They don't want to foul you right now. We have the advantage right now, so go and exploit it just like we saw Patrick Williams do there. That's a great point, Katie. 14 points in the paint in the first half for the Seminoles. They're 28 points and a half. We're only halfway through the second stanza right now, so you can tell that is where the focus is at, really attacking them at the chip. Well, Funderburk and Bates on the bench. Danny Bates with three, DJ Funderburk with four. That's why you see Danny Dixon on the floor, who did not play the other night against, or played five minutes against Duke, did not play at Boston College last Sunday night. Here's Johnson with seven to shoot, and a lot of dribbling against Osborne, and the scoop and score for Markel Johnson, who has seven in the ball game. A man defense presented for Florida State. Markel Johnson, those eyes get big and goes right to the rim. Yep. Under 10 to go now. Two point lead for the number eight, seven old. The cell of three. Got it from the left corner. Some contact there too. Everly, hands to the face. Vassell still gets it to go. 11 for Vassell. 
The lead is five. We're closing in on finding out what's what here. Aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and if you're in the Wolfpack, I'd look for some driving kicks from Johnson. There's Johnson, another scoop. Williams the rebound. Crowd wanted to foul, didn't get it. And Kevin Keats oh. has been teed up, I believe, by Lee Cassell. Coach Keats didn't like there was no whistle there on the Johnson drive. Standing up for his guys. A little too vocal. Let's take a look. Russ, what do you think here? Somebody didn't look over the top. Let's see from this angle. We'll get better look. Free throw by Patrick Williams is good. So Kevin Keats. The technical with 9.21 to go. And now the lead has grown to seven at 55-48. Largest of the ball game Here's for the Noles. I didn't see much contact at all. Definitely not enough contact to warrant the reaction right. that Keats delivered. Yep. Yeah. I hope we have the mute button behind us because <laughs> fans are getting colorful here in a row behind us. Very intense fans here. And I, I love that part of the game. We have kids in the room, maybe ask them to leave. <laughs> Here's Walker for Bassell. And it fell off. Osborne tried to tap it from behind Dixon and draws the foul. First on Malik Osborne, second of the half on Florida State. See Stan Jones, and Charlton Young, and Steve Smith with head coach Leonard Hamilton. A great staff. Yeah. Done a really, really good job building this program. Johnson in the backcourt had to break the timeline before the 10 count. Johnson lets it even more to bring this at this point, right? Here's Johnson at three on two. Missed it on the backside for Williams on the rebound. I just feel like Johnson needs to try to break Osborne down again. Quick first step, put pressure. Osborne, a great defender with size. Foul on Markel Johnson, his second. One and one down to Florida State into the floor, but the Walker Bryce collision here. He just really got into him. And on the oh, lower Dixon side. came on the cross check. That's where Bryce. Ended up taking the ball, it looked like. So here's Malik Osborne, 75% free throw shooter on the one and one, too strong. Ahead for Bryce. Blocked Osborne, CJ got it back. Dixon battling inside, but it's pulled away by Williams. Florida State has tightened the proverbial defensive screws here in half two. They're not giving much up at the rim. Forrest, the little runner and score. Eight for Trent Forrest and a timeout. Nine point lead for Florida State. Largest lead of the ball game for the Knowles. Hey, Wes, tell me if you've heard this story before. Florida State getting it done defensively. Collision sport. Shake it up a moment ago, Katie. Yeah, prior to today, guys, C.J. Bryce had played in 10 games since missing four after Whoa. suffering a concussion in a shoot-around. In his Whoa. first five games back, Bryce averaged 6.2 points Whoa. per game, which was significantly less than his season average. Whoa. Having never experienced a concussion before, Whoa. Bryce said he was surprised how much it affected him. Once cleared, he still felt slow and sluggish on the floor. It was hard to find his rhythm shooting, and obviously his game fitness took a hit. But in the last five outings prior to today, his numbers have jumped back up. But he's finally feeling and playing like his normal self again but that shot to the jaw might make him a little hesitant moving forward yep. keep an eye on cj bryce nc state trails by nine largest deficit of the ball game for kevin keats's club here with 745 to play and bryce was big in that miami and q's bc games didn't need a scoring versus duke with the 10 rebounds has been quiet scoring in his daniels shot clock violation markel johnson trying to penetrate and kick and NC State doesn't end up with a great look. You're just simply going to need more from Markel Johnson down the stretch here. Daniels has made plays. Helms has made plays. 
But you need your star, your senior point guard, to be a star here in the last seven and a half minutes for you to have a chance. Skip for Vassell's three. And the rebound pulled away. Daniels. And a foul called, I believe, Osborne or Patrick Williams. It's on the freshman Williams. It will be his second and third on Florida State here in the second half. Combined 5 of 20, Bryce and Johnson. Those two guys got to figure it out to make plays here. Helms and Daniels isn't enough, but Thunderbird back on the floor. Can he play cleanly, stay in this game, but still be productive? Daniels, long drive, scooped it up on the window. Thunderbird the stick back, and a foul will be called. And it's going to be on Malik Osborne. Just plays with such an energy. And when he's on the bench, some of that energy, coupled with that zone that Florida State went to, it really sucked the life out of this Wolfpack team for a stretch that the Seminoles were able to climb back in front. So here's DJ Funderburk at the line, one of two in the first half. And this one good for his eight point. Don't forget Monday night at 8 o'clock Eastern, new episode, episode five of All Access with Carolina Basketball. Behind the scenes look at the return of Cole Anthony to the Tar Heel lineup and the showdown with Duke. All that much, much more, including an in-depth piece on Charlie Scott. As we celebrate Black, Black History Month, that's Monday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, here on ACC Network. Seven-point game under seven to go. And Walker, who's 10 points quickly at the start of the second half, kind of infused Florida State. He trailed by five at the breaking. He's been firing out the second half. Ten to shoot the winner Hamilton's team. And Walker's three off the mark. Vassell, the rebound, and the second chance. For Florida State. 13th offensive rebound has just been crushing for the Wolfpack, who by a large part have done the job defensively. Forrest for Walker. Five to shoot on the reset. Up front, here's Osborne. Leans in, fouled, and one. Malik Osborne drew the foul from Markel Johnson. That will be his third. That's nine on the Wolfpack. And all eight of Osborne's points here at half two. And that's just huge. The Wilder and Fury set to do battle later tonight. That's a that's a devastating body blow. To guard, 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 get a stop, allow an offensive rebound, more guarding, and a potential three-point play opportunity. So one for Osborne. About he and Walker in the second half. That's just it when you talk about Florida State. Obviously, a lot of Walker, some Osborne, but it's it's really you don't know who the guy is going to be. And that's what's challenging. They played 12 guys today. 12. Wolfpack's gone four and a half minutes without a field goal. The deficit 10 now for Kevin Keats' as well. Joe Lenardi put him in the field after the win Wednesday night. But certainly a lot of Wolfpack fans were looking for an insurance policy here today. Knowing that they got a road trip to Carolina, another game with Duke, and home games with Pitt and Wake Forest, Luke. Since not Price is dead. Two, two of 12. Hasn't had many clean ones. Some of the shot selection has been questionable. And that one definitely classifies. Forrest trying to work Helms off the Osborne pick. Tried to go to Vassell, kicked away to Williams. Forrest on a four foul Thunderbird. You got to drive it here. Instead, the long three, badly missed, Patterson rebound. Patterson. Could be a piece of video study, perhaps. Got a guy with four fouls, he can't guard. Helms backs down Walker and score. Jericho Helms has 14 in the ball game. On the doorstep. Got to get some stops. Eight-point game, just ahead of five to go and roll. How much is on the line here? Leonard Hamilton, I think, wants a timeout. And Jerry Heater will give it to him across the way. Jericho Helms just backing people down. A big time play here from Helms. You know, that, that's decent defense. Help side never comes a little bit too late in the finish. Helms has been a, a reliable option throughout this entire game, utilizing his size Screen touch. Don't forget Sunday nights, 8 o'clock Eastern, here on ACC Network. 
nothing but net. A preview of the matchups ahead, including Monday night's game between number 11 Louisville and Florida State. A look back at the best games from the week gone by. Highlights, analysis, and insight. I like to I like to say that Kelsey Riggs officiates nothing but net. Yeah, Eight o'clock Eastern. She's the Trent Forrest of the team. <laughs> She gets everybody in place. She's the trick part. To make things happen. How's she's, that? Without a doubt. She, she's the leader. She's the floor leader. It doesn't work That's right. if there's no Trent Forrest. Got to have a point guard. It doesn't guard. work if there's no Kelsey yeah. Riggs. So great to be with Jordan Cornette. By the way, Jay Alter, Dallin Cuff, standing by Chestnut Hill, Boston College, Clemson. Still to come here this afternoon on ACC Network. NC State, though, we talked about they like some insurance. The Mentioned win the quad win. Ones. Mentioned the quad, quad ones. Quad ones, right, right. Kevin Keats said, don't forget, we could get another quad yeah. one win. But they yeah. like some insurance. A win here today would certainly provide them the policy of insurance. But you can't lose sight that if it doesn't work for you today, it doesn't mean it's over, right? It doesn't mean it's over, but it's a great opportunity for you. Then you look at, you got North Carolina, you got Pitt. You're at Duke on March 2nd, which is another huge opportunity. And then Wake Forest. But then you're probably still in another position where you're going into Greensboro and saying, guys, we got to do some things here, win a game or two. Don't want to be the team sitting there on Selection Sunday wondering. Still got a shot right now, Wes. Yep. Joe Lenardi had five ACC teams in the latest edition of Bracketology. Needless to say, that is a volatile document this time of year. Six to shoot. Out of the Leonard Hamilton timeout, here is the cell off the baseline. Williams, the nice tap follow for the freshman. That's the undoing of the Wolfpack. One of them at this point in the game is offensive rebounds for the Seminoles. The inability to get the stop and the rebound. Fifth double-figure game in the last six now for freshman Patrick Williams. Lead back to 10 with 4.18 to go and the runner by Daniels. And out of the scram comes Walker, front court. Now Florida State, double-figure advantage. Has to soak some of the clock. Walker a three, hit the side of the glass. I thought Daniels fouled it, there was no whistle. Hey, hey. NC State can't wait around, can they, Jordan? No, no absolutely not. You've got to be in attack. There's the turnover. Bissell will flip it ahead. Walker, bounce pass to Forrest. How did that get through by Helms? No idea. <laughs> but it did. And here again, Florida State. The burn of the clock. Leonard Hamilton with 52 road wins in the ACC as the Seminole head coach, trying to go five and three on the road in the conference this year with a win today. And to sell another second chance on the offensive end. 15 offensive rebounds. Wow. That's it. Here's Osborne to help with the screen. A kick with eight on the clock. Well, Patrick Williams, another double-figure effort for the freshman from Charlotte. This one off of a cell miss. Very Cornette-like, I might add, <laughs> off the backside. <laughs> a Zaxby's player of the game. Brought to you by Zaxby's, 11 points and six rebounds. Don't look at me like that. I didn't say he's ball George West right now. He said he's got some of those tools in the toolkit. I'll ask Katie. When Paul I was think, coming out of college. I think Katie, like me, heard you say he's Paul George. I heard him say it. Yep. Oh, wow. Yep, that's wow. where we are. I'm right not now. making eye contact over there. <laughs> Don't look this way. I hear you, Cornette. Ten-point game. But us Midwesterners, I thought we stick together. I mean, for a lesson I'm learning here this Saturday afternoon. Three ball out front by Osborne. Spins out. Here's Hellams with under three to go, and the Wolfpack trailing by 10. And a turnover there for NC State. Well, let's say this, that the Vassell Zaxby's player of the game came from a list of strong nominations. <laughs> it did. Including Thanks. Trent Forrest, MJ Walker, and Patrick Williams. Hey, you throw Malik Osborne in Malik there. Osborne as well. And that's what Florida State is. Hey, you took the words right out of my mouth, Chris. That's who this team is. That's why they're such a tough out. That's why me and you and a lot of the country are so high on this team. It's that system of Coach Hamilton. So many guys can hurt you. Yep. 
Here is Forrest with eight to shoot on the drive. And Osborne knocked out of bounds. It will belong to the Wolfpack. And I got to tell you, Katie, my favorite part about Patrick Williams, not only is his basketball skill set, it's just kind of who he is and who his mom is. Oh, yeah, his mother, Janie Williams, taught her son an invaluable lesson at a young age. If you want something in this world, you have to work hard and go get it. 11 years ago, Janie Williams, who is here today, decided to leave her job working for a local flower shop in Charlotte to start her own business, Williams Florist. Patrick's first job was delivering flowers for his mom when he was in high school, so he saw her build the family business firsthand. He said he'd watch her transition from employee to employer, and it was incredible. Janie would be the first person to leave the house and the last one home. And Williams Flores has now been a staple in the Charlotte area for 11 years. Quite the example for her son. I'd say so. I love him. A nice young man. I, it gives me a goosebumps, I'm telling you. Seeing your family here to support you, uh, succeeding on the court, takes me back to my playing days. The comfort it brought me to look over. And knowing that story now, seeing your family, it's incredible. Benny not really happy at all with the no call there. Oh, the you know, Mom's going to get in the officials now. <laughs> yep. So a timeout, 62-54. She wanted to jump ball with 99 <laughs> seconds to go in the game. That's exactly right. Eight-point lead for Florida State after the bucket by Daniels. And Patrick has had a nice day, 11 points, half dozen rebounds, came in averaging Nine and four. He's also 11th in the league in block shots. And uh, he's really been shining as of late. Yes, sir. ACC Rookie of the Week a couple times. And I'll tell you, this is a big 48 hour swing when you think about the fact Florida State's playing NC State today. And Monday night, the Tucker Center will be up for grabs again because here come the cards who they handled by 13 points back on January 4th. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you're looking at a, a Clemson team that's very tough there at Clemson, ask Duke, ask Louisville. Right. Notre Dame, at that point, we don't know what Notre Dame is going to be playing for. Could it be potentially a postseason berth? So you're going to get their best effort. And Boston College, you never know. So you yeah. got to stay locked in. It's been really impressive to me that they came out here knowing how hungry NC State would be and have still managed to turn around in the second half and play impressive basketball. By the way, the cards are cruising in the final minute at the Yump Center today against Carolina. And uh, so you look at Louisville, that would move them to 14 and three. Jordan Wara has got 18 on the on the way to the Louisville victory. So it seems like Wara has now recovered from that two straight effort that was incredibly subpar for what his standards been. By the way, Syracuse up four on Georgia Tech. There's about three and a half to go at the dome today in Central New York. When you lose that game, you can almost forget about it if you're Syracuse. So that one is, is huge as they were trailing by 11, not ready to give up on their season quite yet. DJ Funderburk has fouled out of the ball game with 137 to go on a backcourt foul as NC State tries to extend the game here down eight points at 62-54. That stretch of scoreless basketball that the Wolfpack endured, which ultimately was another undoing in this game. Funderburk was on the bench with that foul trouble. They only had two field goals in 10 minutes and 17 seconds of play. So Funderburk being saddled with that foul trouble definitely hurt them. And if you want to look at where Florida State's comeback began, the guy at the free throw line would be a good place to start. MJ Walker scoreless in the first half. Has gone for 10 here in the second half. And a chance to top his average there and does so with the free throw. Well, you mentioned it astutely, Wes. Coming out, you said, you're going to need this guy. Yep. And he went right to work from that point, right out of the gates, start the second half. And the team followed suit. Walker hits it both. Same high school as the former Seminole Tony Douglas. Just south of Atlanta, Jonesboro, Georgia, went to North Clayton and has really had a very solid junior season. Three ball from Daniels. NC State's got to get it to a two possession situation. Well, you got the leak out. You got the you got MJ wide open down the floor. Missed him on the seam route. Daniels in the backcourt. Helms and Beverly stole it, knocked it away. Got to go. Here's Beverly on the drive. 
A two-pointer is short. Slapped out for Markel Johnson. We're in the final minute now in Rollins. Daniels and Walker the rebound and he will race it by Markel Johnson who commits the foul. Man, did you get a good look. Daniels feet set, no defense around. And all of a sudden it's real game pressure, two possession game, but can't get it to fall. Walker does the right thing, leaking out with the basket. You have talked about rebounding here in the second half, especially in the last 10 minutes. It's premium is going to buoy Florida State to a, a potential win here. And they're not a great defensive rebounding team, which is an anomaly with their size. Very good on the offensive glass. They've done what's necessary when they get the stop to get that defensive rebound and take away any second chance. Well, here's just a look at Syracuse and Pittsburgh, JC. No Devin Vassell in the Syracuse game. Not much Devin Vassell versus Pitt. But the effort and the overwhelming wholesale line changes for a roster plays 11. Crowd erupts. Two misses means free sandwiches. Here's Johnson on the drive, rebounded by Osborne with 45 seconds left in an NC State foul. And we talked about that scoreless drought of 10 minutes. You're not going to beat an opponent like Florida State without your best Markel Johnson. Right. Markel Johnson has struggled all game long and his backcourt mate C.J. Bryce has as well. And, and it's because of look how quickly they clamp down at the rim. Malik Osborne takes away any clear opportunity there, and it quickly becomes a low percentage drive. Well, playing a verticality exquisitely handled by Malik Osborne. Yeah, Malik Osborne has been good on the glass. He's been able to score. He's been special defensively on some tough matchups on the ball. By the way, Osborne is shooting for his first double-double as a member of the Seminoles here today. He's got a season-high 11 rebounds already. And probably their best offensive rebounder for a team that is so good in that area. This is a young man, by the way, who came in from Rice, averaged nine points and seven rebounds at the close of the 18 season, Jordan. He used the transfer year to add 25 pounds. And I, I tell you, it went in as pure muscle. <laughs> he is put together. Yep. Missed them both. Giving them opportunities. Yep. Seven point game. Daniels on the drive, a five point game. 35 seconds left. Patrick Williams in the backcourt. A quick foul. He's handled Max Farthing playing for the 10th time this year. Young man from Word of God Academy here in Raleigh. And he will set the Seminoles to the line with 33 seconds left. Florida State comes in shooting 77% against the conference. And much to the delight of Janie Williams, Patrick makes the first. He ain't going to miss the mom here. <laughs> Not one of the two, though. Six point game. 28 seconds left. NC State three. out of timeouts. Lob for Helms. Left it short. Ripped out of there and recovered by Osborne with 20 seconds left. That's a missed call. That's basket interference. There's a tug at the net. And if that came from a Seminole, that should be a basket interference call. And it's just a matter of who grabs this net here. Is it Bright? Hard to tell from there, the whoever that left arm is, and we're being told that's Osborne. That's a basket interference. That's an automatic two. So Osborne back to the line. And a six-point game with 19.7 left and missed the free throw. Here's another look at it. So when Osborne with his left hand inadvertently, doesn't matter, right. grabs that net, that is basket interference. And NC State should have been rewarded two points. Osborne missed them both. He's missed four straight. NC State needs threes. Down six. In the corner, Farthing stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds. Max Farthing just one of seven shooting threes this year. Beverly needs to understand. Yeah, it's chaos. 
but the ball can't make it over to such a seldomly used player right. in such an important situation. So Osborne will come out of the game. Raekwon Evans, who's 72% at the free throw line, will step in. 11 seconds left. We'll send you right to Chestnut Hill when this finishes, and there's a foul quickly called on C.J. Bryce that will put Trent Forrest to the free throw line. Well, Florida State gets Louisville on Monday night. NC State goes to Chapel Hill to meet a Carolina team who defeated them by 10 in this building in late January. Yeah, and that NC State team is going to be seeing a different North Carolina team. With Cole Anthony now back, Harrison Brooks, who was dominant in the first matchup, his status will be unknown going into that one. By the way, Forrest, 83% at the line in conference play, hits his first of the afternoon at the strike. Yesterday, one of almost 50 student athletes in the ACC to be named to the Weaver James Cargan Thacker Postgraduate Scholarship list. So hit them both there. It's an eight point game. Daniels will lay it in. And it is going to be a final here in Raleigh. Florida State comes from five down in the second half. And they beat NC State 67 to 61. The Knowles now 23 and 4 and 13 and 3 in the ACC. And they stay in that group with Duke and Louisville at the front, Jordan. Very impressive for them to come out here on a Saturday afternoon. The Wolfpack faithful showing up, understanding there's postseason implications.